Hi Sag, thank you for joining me and welcome to my channel. This is your reading for 2020. My name is Baruch and I'm excited to be here. You can see my cauldrons already burning, boiling something up for you for this year and I hope that you enjoy it. I also had to switch up my candle and I had to, the wick was short so I had to make it run down the side and look how pretty it turned out just for you. And orange is kind of your color too. I finished all the fire signs, you're the last one. So I hope you enjoy this. Um, I'm gonna do the extended for members only in the description. Um, you can get all the members only videos for one low price right now. So go check that out. That will be available for everybody in a few months in March or April. So if you don't have money to spend, just wait a couple months and we'll get the clarifier out for you, maybe March or April. I also want to do a horoscope reading for you guys, but I, I want to make sure that you guys want to see it. So make sure to leave a comment in the description if you do, and then I will. Okay, so let's take a look at your cards. So I'm using the Toth deck. This is a deck I've had for a long time. Oh man, right off the bat, Sag. Seven of Pentacles. This is the scariest card in this deck looking but it's actually not that scary because it says failure and it's like oh darn what's this this is the fear of failure so something's motivating your actions from a position of fear like you're afraid so you're saving more money you're being more cautious um i think that you're proceeding with caution moving forward i don't think you're gonna be as uh, spendthrift with your money. I think that you are sort of becoming more careful, more organized, and trying to figure out what your long-term prospect is, what your long-term outlook is. Uh, Knight of Swords around you, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra, secondary transits in fire, Sag, Leo, or Aries. Somebody comes to you with very important information. This is a person who's very, very smart. They're gonna tell you some information that you need to pay attention to or you better pay attention to. It's a good idea to pay attention to this information that the Knight of Swords has. There's also the Knight of Wands and let me clarify for you now, these knights in this deck are actually kings. So we're not talking about like knights in a regular tarot deck. These are actually the two kings. And so this is for the feminine energy, which means that in the feminine energy, there's someone who is expressing a lot of love to you, a lot of kind of warmth and a huge invitation. I'm trying to describe it properly. They in some way see, I think that this person is in some way on the periphery for your awareness and they may be interested in you, but they're missing the mark, okay? So in and of themselves, they will tell you information that is going to be helpful to you and good for you. However, I have a feeling that it's this person who sees exactly the page you're on and is going to match you on it or bring you some type of positivity to it. So you're receiving some kind of positive energy from this Knight of Wands. This may evolve throughout the whole year, so it may not be evident to you right away who is who and what is what. The next message is the Death card, which is the card of Scorpio. Okay, so this has to do with the divine masculine, a change in a relationship with a man. Uh, transformation, this can also mean an insurgence. So from something that was not happening at all, suddenly something starts picking up. I'm trying to get through this first row so I can comment. And the Princess of Cups in your environment. A Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, secondary transits in Earth. Look at that turtle. By the way, I saw a marine ecologist say that the issue with straws is actually a ridiculous thing. Now, Vancouver, where I live, has banned straws now. Um, but I heard this marine biologist say that straws are actually relatively a small portion of water pollution that actually marine fishing you know ocean fishing is the number one catastrophically 99 percent of uh of the debris in the ocean has to do with fishing so word to the wise it's the turtle that reminded me and i hope you guys share that information because i think the fact that we 
uh, uh, band straws, outlawed straws, whatever, is actually something that is not helping the environment and maybe giving people a false sense of security about it, that, oh, we're helping, everything's great. Whereas in fact, the same kind of degradation to the environment, especially in marine ecosystems is happening right now. So that came to mind. I'm not sure if that's relevant to the majority of you, but maybe some of you will appreciate that message and look into it and share it with your audience. Um, I have a friend who's an Aries and she loves, 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 loves animals so much. She's a vegan, very active activist. And I have a feeling, um, and I, I always associate her with Sagittarius because she's an Aries. And, um, and basically, <laughs> I just reminded you, I was probably thinking about her. Okay. So looking at this, it looks like maybe you start off a little nervous this year, Sag. Maybe you're kind of not sure where things will go, how to build things in the way that you want them to grow. There's definitely two people who you have a relationship with or who you are communicating with or having some kind of exchange. This is the person who is possibly more of a perfect match for you. They are a fire sign. And frankly, I mean, this could be also you and the divine feminine energy, a very assertive energy going for what you want to achieve. If this is you, this could be your partner. And you may see your partner sort of maybe not, not leaving the picture, but definitely maybe getting out of the way so that you can achieve what you seek to achieve, right? And that can change some of the dynamics, change some of the dynamics at home, change some of the dynamics in your workplace. There could be also a very important Scorpio that shows up wherever you are really building structure, such as your business, your career, um, as in your marriage, there could be a Scorpio that's around. And when you look out for a Scorpio, then you should really, if a Scorpio enters your life in a mysterious fashion, it's really important to in some way honor that uh, person there. And so give them respect and in some way like welcome them in and on a metaphysical level, like really listen to what they have to say to you, what they want to share because they're bringing a message and it's often tied to the fact that something in your life is ending and they're there to sort of ease the transition or teach you a valuable lesson or something like that. This Princess of Cups energy has me really happy for you. A lot of signs are getting this energy. This might have to do with the North Node in Cancer until May 2020. Um, but this Princess of Cups is a new friend or a new confidant who is going to be very nice to you. So this is someone who you can trust. This is someone on your team. This is someone who's on your side and is very, very nice to you, okay? The next message is the Two of Rods, Mars in Aries, change of vision, change of perspective. So I have a feeling that this Knight of Swords is heading straight to the family area, which is right here. This makes me think that your partner may step down in terms of like the goals, career goals that you shared together or working towards a certain outcome. And they may gravitate towards the home, towards family circumstances, towards things like that. So they may be, they may become a more pronounced facet of your life in your home rather than maybe as a part of your job or as a part of your public life. So I think that there's a trend towards that there. In some way, I think this person is guiding you in that direction, especially if they have placements in Gemini. So check out their placements to see if that person has Gemini placements and that's probably for who the message will resonate the most. Likewise, I feel like you will take up a cause or maybe your partner will take up a cause. And if you're both women or dating women, then please change the gender around. That's not as important as the energy. So we have the Knight of Wands in some way making plans for the future. I think your, your family or your environment sees you successful and I think they see big things for you. And I think that they're anticipating the fact that big things will come for you, that, go that good things are happening. They are resting assured that you will be successful in the path you're choosing now. The next message is Jupiter and Capricorn, the two of pentacles. This is what we have going on right now. Continued 
pace. It's very strange for Sagittarians to come off of a year where we had Jupiter in Sagittarius, which is the ruling planet of Sagittarius, and it's a year in which you just went through so much with so many different opportunities, so many different challenges, so many different things to think about, right? So you've gone through all of these things over and over and over again. And now in some way, it is time for you to uh, kind of slow the pace. The tempo around you slows. Nobody can keep up that tempo that fast. So um, now you're seeing things still moving along for you successfully, but much more methodically. Furthermore, Jupiter in Capricorn is in your second house. Second house has to do with money. So that's why this focus right here, it's like, oh, I have this opportunity, but you feel the decline of the energy because Jupiter is now in Capricorn in your second house and not your first house. So you feel that energy sort of leaving you and you're like, wait a minute, I really got to hustle before the energy leaves me. Trust me, I'm a Virgo. This is what happened for me in 2015. So just get your hustle on and make sure that you work, work, work and apply yourself this year because good things are gonna come from that effort. And then we have the Ace of Pentacles. Uh, a new offer from a, from a Leo, a new opportunity from a Leo, right there, there's that connection. Um, but this is the Leo position, so that's why I'm suggesting it's that. New beginnings, new job, new career. Uh, very, very, this is a lot to do with the solar plexus. The solar plexus is the chakra that's over your diaphragm. And what it means is that like your life energy, life force, your mana, your, your, uh, your life force, your joie de vivre in French, joy of life. Uh, carpe diem, seize the day, all of that energy is situated right here with an ace of pentacles. That's the, that's the bottom late ace on the hierarchy. So you're literally setting seeds for future success, future, future financial success. So you should be very excited about this. The next message, boom, I'm just shuffling to the side. I literally, this is an old deck. So I like gently shuffle to the side and pull the top card. So we have the Ace of Cups next. I like shuffling so that the energy stays current because otherwise it turns out really stale. So, um, so we have the Ace of Cups next. You're gonna have possibly a secret crush on someone or maybe amicable feelings or admiration, feelings of admiration towards someone. I have a feeling that you're gonna keep those feelings to yourself because your primary focus is gonna be this, this goal of finances. So everything becomes secondary rather than you know the core energy of that. The next message is the Four of Wands, which is Venus in Aries. This is happy home, happy family, okay? So this is the, the very lucky thing. Your home is your sanctuary. I got to add water to this because this is going to dry out. I got to keep my cauldron juicy. Oh, and you heard my little bell. Okay, well, it's, it's low key. It's just a Coke bottle. I don't drink Coca-Cola. It's the only Coke bottle I have. See? Just add a little water and now we're golden. So this is my little potion for you guys and I added a whole bunch of different things. You guys got something else in it that I'm not gonna say what, I'll teach you guys in another video, but it's for protection and blessings. So I, I for each sign I'm doing a little potion to the side and that's my secret formula and I hope it brings you good luck. Uh, okay, so we have the four of wands, okay. So happy home, ha happy family, a sanctuary brings you really good feelings about which direction you're going to go. I think you're going to be focusing a lot on career this year. Again, money is going to be the name of the game. And so um, you're, you don't want to lose your opportunities, right? And so in order to not lose your op opportunities, you're going to focus on money, but then also have this kind of sanctuary in your home where you get away from it all, where you turn off the internet, where you just kind of huddle in bed, maybe read a book or relax, drink some tea or something like that. So this is a very positive place for you to go. And in fact, I think this Princess of Cups and you will be sharing this a lot. So I don't know if this is your child or if this is a friend, but there's a very youthful, kind energy from 
female energy around you that's going to be bringing you blessings. This can also suggest for some of you, not all, and frankly, if this is happening for you, most likely you're already aware about it. This may be an end to a marriage in the fourth 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 position here. That's the emperor position. And so this is a change of home or residence. So now that I'm seeing this, I would say that maybe for some of you, this will involve, you know, changing home, changing residence to finding something better, possibly a change, an end to a marriage, but most likely change of home, change of residence to something better. Okay, so let's take a look at the next card. We have the Eight of Pentacles, Sun in Virgo, yay, justice and fairness rule the day. I think this comes from effort and applying yourself. Um, there's, there's a situation, you're going to feel better and better this year. Each line kind of corresponds to the quarters of the year. So we have the winter, spring, summer, fall, and winter, okay? So it kind of overlaps a little bit, but that's okay. And so I think where you start off is feeling quite vulnerable. I don't have the skills. I don't know what to do. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Panicky, right? Kind of energy. But then you sort of find internal resolve and say, hey, wait a minute. Jupiter's in my second house. This is not a time for feeling self-conscious. This is a time when I got to giddy up. So I think what you're going to do is really take that seriously and refine your skills and grow into the skill set that is going to bring you a lot of success, the skill set that is going to get you going in the direction that you want to. And whenever you feel weak, you're going to turn to your family members to give you that support because they're going to have that vision for you. They're going to say, wow, you know, Sag, you can really go and achieve it. So you have a really wonderful environment of people who are bringing you all this support and energy so it's it's really good for you to use it don't abuse it that kind of thing I know that's corny but we have the moon in cancer four of cups um, I have a feeling that your general energy is that around you for all the things that I said that were nice one of the things that's tripping you out is the fact that the things around you are in some way giving you a small portion of what you what you have so these things around you are giving you far less than what you deserve so your environment is in some way maybe not starving you out but definitely shortchanging you not giving you as much as you deserve there there's that feeling that you've had in the past even in 2019 that is still resonant for you and i have a feeling that this is an ongoing problem for you with others where I think that maybe this is a Sag issue where you sort of give a lot and receive relatively a little back. You know, like you do a ton of things for someone and you can't even get them to pick you up from the bus, you know, or something like that. And so I feel like that energy is haunting you. Why are people like this with me? I always get clients who contact me for readings and they say, why are my, why is, why are my um, friends always doing this? Why is my boyfriend always doing this? Why is my girlfriend doing this, right? So it's like, it's this kind of feeling that it's happening. And I'm not, I don't think it's fictitious. I think it's, I think that that generosity from your heart is actually motivating some people to be passive around you because we live in an age of passivity, right? So it may, it may it's probably happening. It may not be as bad as you think it is, but it may not be also personally directed at you. And it may be coming from the fact that Sagittarians are generous and Sagittarians are very optimistic. So sometimes that puts a target on your back from people who don't want to put the effort in. I just realized it's 20 minutes in. The other signs are going to hate me for taking my sweet time with your reading. But I hope you appreciate. Leave me a like. Yes, make sure the like and comment to make the energy real. Then you have this hanged man in this position. 
Um, you want a change to happen, but there's been delays, a lot of delays, and a lot of going back and forth about an issue. You, I think, in your mind are very settled. I think for you, it's almost becoming black and white. Maybe you were more in the gray about things before, but now you're more confident about the direction you want to take. However, the world around you is still keeping that change at bay. It's not happening as quick as you want. This has a lot to do with the fall. The move probably will happen in the spring or early summer. Then we have the Five of Pentacles next. Um, in this position, delays on becoming closer with someone. Delays on becoming closer on someone because of fears of financial struggle or financial issues. So I think that um, you're being drawn or guided towards someone this may not be romantic. Remember, there's other romantic sort of things going on here. It's not this Princess of Cups either. But there's someone with whom you may want to bond with or get closer with. But there's financial barriers or physical barriers between the two of you. Um, that's something that's going to become prominent, especially in the fall. Hopefully, you'll be able to work through it. I'm going to clarify in the members only reading. And then we have the Seven of Swords. So this is not a year to be bashful. The Seven of Swords represents a time in which maybe you are ready to sort of break out or break away from things, run away from things, maybe a little afraid, maybe a little bit afraid, maybe a little bit shy, a little bit unsure uh, about the direction you're going, a little shy, um, those things are going to hold you back. I think it's going to be, in some way, Jupiter is no longer in Sagittarius, so that quick reaction thing that you had going on last year, it was this ability to really pick out opportunity and go after it really fast. I think that's waning for you now. Nobody can work that fast forever, right? Like it, it's just not feasible and it's not good energetically. So you're feeling the tempo go slower around you. However, I feel like that doesn't mean that your instinct to pursue something should back off. So yes, the, the pace is somewhat more methodical, so more, more paced, but also at the same time, it's, it's, um, it, you still need to initiate because your goal is to make money. Your goal is to keep what Jupiter has brought into your life, right? Here is the next message. We have the Prince of Cups. Pisces, Cancer, or Scorpio, secondary transits in air, Gemini, Aquarius, or Libra. I have a feeling that an understanding with someone is going to change through the, especially late fall and early winter. This could be an emotional understanding. So you're communicating with someone about your emotions a lot. There's a real sure-footedness between the both of you. And then winter comes and there will be a slight change in your disposition towards each other. It's no longer so easy. It's no longer so natural. It's a little bit different. So you may just grow apart. It may not be traumatic. However, I feel like the problem is that this person carries a lot of emotions, your emotions. They know your secrets and they also are a confidant, someone who you rely on, someone who you trust. And I think you're really moving from the emotional confidant energy, so someone with whom you emotionally relate and talk about your feelings with, to a much more air-like energy, which is someone who's very reasonable, rational, you know, strategic, kind of wise. So you're moving between people who are guiding you from the more emotional towards the more... Um, the more kind of reason based, you know, and structure, order, logic, rules, those kinds of thinking that that can be very helpful. And I think don't feel bad about it because this person will really help you get your life right. And maybe that's why he's going so fast into your house of family, because maybe he knows that he can help you the most from there. So maybe that's that's what it is. And it could be a woman as well. And she may not be an air sign. This might refer to her character or his character more than the astrology. Here is the next message, the nine of rods. This is a very important position. And it's your card, Sag, if you have sun in Sagittarius, the nine of rods. Drawing, drawing back, knowing when to step back and step into your home, step into your private space. 
you know, not pressing in when you want people to in some way go at the same pace as you want to go. A lot of this has to do with your personal ambition. So you want to achieve these things, which means like just like fishing, you have to wait for the fish to go by. If your friend standing beside you on the riverbed, that friend can't help that fish get on your rod any faster, no matter what they say, no matter what they do. So you can't necessarily put pressure on the people around you to achieve your goals. I think that was actually a really good analogy. So listen to that again if you don't get it. But essentially, you shouldn't be, you have high ambitions, high goals for yourself. And the people around you who can't keep up with your pace shouldn't have to pay the price for your ambition. You see? And so therefore, I think that you will retain a lot of friends by in some way knowing where you begin and your ambition ends and where they begin so as not to kind of and that's what you're going to be doing very well and that's going to lead to less interruptions less bad consequences all of that stuff six of rods and ten of swords flipped out together okay sun in gemini uh, and then also jupiter in leo in this position there's a secret possibly about a gemini or possibly with a Gemini that was in some way bringing things down and I have a feeling that that's been resolved to your liking or to your preference. The next message is the tower. So we have this in, again, somebody else received the tower in this position. This is the position of the sun. So I have a feeling that there's a fundamental change but amidst this change is a new relationship, okay? And this can point to love at first sight. So you never know, but this is a big decision that you're gonna make. Maybe you're sitting around waiting for that fish to bite your rod, right? And then finally something comes along at the end of the year. So you may want to be a little bit patient with this energy and just really wait it out until the end of the year. Last card, we have the eight of rods. I still have the bottom card for you. We have Mercury in Sagittarius, fast communication. Many of you who have Sag Sun also have Mercury in Sag. Fast communication, a fast change, a fast decision to know exactly which way you're going. That information is going to come from the Princess of Cups. And on the bottom is Four of Swords, which is Rest, Jupiter, and Libra. A lot of people are getting this, and I think a lot of people are... Maybe it's not the fortune you wanted, but I think it's a fortune that will actually bring you a lot of relief. Like, I think it's a fortune in which you feel like, whew, like all of this is out of the way. Like this is, now I get to rest and decompress and, and I'm safe, you know? Like the feeling of reaching safety is huge in this reading, um, doing everything possible to attain a level of success. And then also really being selective about the people who are around you. As you can see, more people at the beginning of the year than the rest, but I think that's your choice. I think you're in some way heading off in your own direction and you know that in order to get there, you will have to go by yourself because you can go faster than when you're with others. That doesn't mean that you're breaking up with someone. It doesn't mean that you'll be suddenly alone and nobody will be there. But I think in the latter part of the year, the focus will be way more on you doing your own thing and being very selective about who you bring around. And not everybody's gonna be a perfect fit for that. And then also the transition from deeply emotional and cathartic conversations with someone to very reason-based kind of discussions okay thank you guys so much for watching i'm going to do the extended clarifying each row one by one on the members only section after march or april i will post this for everyone so go check it out thank you guys so much for watching i hope you have a happy holiday let me know if you guys want the horoscope reading let me know in the description below talk to you soon take care bye